the Du Zhengyan Water Resource Management System in the People's Republic of China is the world's only existing dammless water diversion structure. Its ingenious design embodies the principles of holistic and systematic thinking, demonstrating a detailed understanding of natural forces in leveraging natural power to manage climatic risks and natural disasters such as droughts and floods. The system immaculately combines structural measures, the natural environment, and human well-being and achieves a great balance among all three. After more than 2,200 years, it is still functioning. Today, it plays an irreplaceably important role in flood management and agricultural, domestic, and industrial water supply, benefiting 23 million people and driving the social and economic development in the Sichuan province. Yet, the Chengdu Plain over two millennia ago was not a land of abundance as it is today. In spring and summer, following the snowmelt and rainfall surge, the Mean River rushes down all the way from the plateau in the northwest like a ferocious beast, crashing into the flat lowlands in the southeast, resulting in catastrophic floods that inundates the Chengdu Plain. In contrast, Droughts were also severe during the dry season in autumn and winter. Meanwhile, the large quantity of silt and rocks carried by the river would clog up the waterways and worsen the floods, resulting in a vicious cycle of natural disasters year after year. In 256 BC, in the state of Qin, then governor of Su, Li Bing, took the lead in designing and constructing the Du Chanying Water Resource Management System. The Du Chan Yang Water Resource Management System is comprised of the headworks and a fan-shaped network composed of gravity irrigation channels spreading across the Chengdu Plain. The system has been continuously supplying the Chengdu Plain with water resources, giving rise to the area's Land of Abundance tagline. The Du Chen Ying Headworks, composed of three key structures, including the fish mouth levee, flying sand weir, and bottleneck channel, represents the soul of the whole system. The three parts work seamlessly with one another in directing the flow of water and sediments and achieving great harmony between human and nature. Li Bing's choice to build the headworks at the location where the Min River exits the mountain is critical and has underpinned the success of the overall system. The Fishmouth Levee, the first component of the headworks, is a man-made island in the shape of a giant fish lying in the middle of the river. It is constructed at a big curve in the Min River. When the forceful Min River arrives, this water-dividing levee splits the river into two, the inner and outer streams. The inner stream is a man-made channel directing the water onto Chengdu Plain. The outer stream is the original course of the river, mainly used for flood discharge and silt removal. The inner stream is intentionally constructed deep and narrow, while the outer stream is relatively shallow but wide. During dry season, when the water level is low, more water flows toward the inside of the bend, namely the inner stream. And also because the inner stream is deeper, approximately 60% of water flows into the inner stream and 40% into the outer stream. During the flood season, when the water level is high and the river flows fast, the river course tends to straighten itself and water flows more towards the outside of the bend. It is estimated that 60% of the flow is discharged into the outer stream, while 40% flows into the inner stream. In addition, when floodwaters rush into the bend, massive whirlpools are created, 
where vast amounts of sediment is pushed into the outer side due to centrifugal force and spills into the outer stream and subsequently into the main river. The flying sand weir is located at the outer edge of the inner stream. The bottleneck channel is the last bastion of the headwork system. They partner for a second round of flood discharge and sediment removal. At this time, gunpowder had not yet been invented. Li Bing used fire to heat and icy water to cool the rocks until they cracked and could be removed. This innovative approach has created a new river channel that has not changed in width for over 2,000 years. The bottleneck channel plays another crucial role to control the volume of water flowing onto the Chengdu Plain. The world's first water level gauge was born here to measure the water level and quantity. When the inner stream rushes to the bottleneck channel, the narrow bottleneck will cause the water level to rise. When it rises above the height of the flying sand weir, the overflow would spill into the discharge channel and subsequently join the outer stream. Further, Li Bing took advantage of the bend before the bottleneck channel, where the helicoidal flow and centrifugal force again came into play, coupling with the uplifting force generated by the massive monolith formed by the earthen rocks removed from Yuilei Mountain. With water forming whirlpools near the flying sand weir, spinning the remaining sediments away over flying sand weir. The bigger the flow, the more sediments are removed, reaching a maximum removal rate of 90%. When the construction was completed, Li Bing also devised the annual maintenance policy to clear up the riverbed during each dry season. Li Bing in the construction 作为观察水位的标准，内江逃逸过深的话，保平口进水过多会造成成都平原的洪灾。可是逃浅了，又会造成保平口进水流量不足，从而造成旱灾。同时，也作为飞沙堰堰顶高层的这么一个确定依据。